Welcome back, Iron Investors, to another epic episode, ICN Talks, the podcast where we aim to interview C-level executives, founders, real builders in the space in our industry. Today, the conversation is with Oliver Von Wolf. Oliver, thank you very much for accepting our invitation again. We received a lot of messages. People appreciated the last time when we talked the, the podcast, and I think they found uh, very valuable insights there. So here we go. I'm uh, very grateful you come back. Yeah, Dennis, thank you very much for inviting me again. As I see this time with a different logo from Iron Talks to ICN Talks. So you make a kind of transformation as well. Thank you very much for inviting and having me yes. here as a guest today. Yes, absolutely. A pleasure all the time. It's a fact of um, a branding from ICN Talks. It's just uh, Iron Capital News, right? It stands for Iron Capital News. We will be launching our uh, Web3 news platform, icnnews.xyz, where you guys can stay in top of the curve with all the information in the Web3 space. But uh, in regard of that, we'll be talking later. We'll do a big announcements uh, on the social media everywhere. So coming back to our episodes uh, today, uh, Oliver Von Wolf, last time you've been uh, CEO of Helium Ventures. Uh, what happened? I know you have uh, big news there. Well, I don't know if it's big news, but uh, yes, we started um, 2022 with Helium Ventures. It was most likely structured as a, a venture capital fund. Uh, we raised successful money, we invested successful money, and uh, unfortunately, one of my partners uh, got sick and we decided then uh, more or less to uh, liquidate the company. And I'm, I'm owning the IP address and everything. And I just said, okay, I want to continue together with the team. So I set up then here on Capital, um, just a Capital instead of a venture. More or less, uh, we have the same office. We have most likely the same team still. We changed a bit in the strategy, yeah, because uh, I was not so satisfied to be, a, let's say, a venture capital list at the end uh, of my journey. But no, um, uh, we liquidated the company and I set up here on capital and I'm very happy at the moment. And what <clears> is that big uh, change in the entire management behind? What's, what's the uh, position now of the fund? Yeah, first of all, here on Capital, it's uh, um, I'm 100% shareholder and founder of it, so I don't have to share my decisions with other management or shareholders. Uh, I'm quite freely of doing my decisions. That uh, what gives me a, a bit more freedom and independency, of course. Um, so the diff the main difference is that uh, here on Ventures was like a VC concepted, yeah, and we took LP money, we invested LP money, yeah. And what I didn't like at the end, me personally, was that you lost the connectivity or you lost the connection to the uh, to the projects. Yeah, and that's what I like to do. You know, I'm very hands-on. I like to be operative involved. I really uh, I like to be bringing additional value to companies. And at the end of the day, you're just busy of uh, making short short uh, uh, due diligences and have a look in it and make decisions. And I found this at the end very boring, to be honest. So I don't want to be a venture capitalist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A very um, superficial <clears throat> uh, management strategy. Yeah, no, with Fair and Capital, we have like two pillars. Um, I mean, I'm a rich investment banker. I worked in the regulated world. And uh, so one pillar of Fair and Capital is the regulated products. Here we have a strategic partner from Luxembourg, a hedge fund, uh, where we're building regulated products. We will issuing our first product now in January, the beginning of February, here for the MENA region. Yeah, we have already one product, a product going online. It's a DeFi product. Yeah, so that's the regulated world. And still we are like accelerator and venture builder, but only really for projects which we like and we can really add additional value in. One of these projects, we have an IPO on the London Stock Exchange the end of this year. And for one other project, we're planning having an IPO here on the MENA region. I'm not sure if it will be DIFC or ADGM, but it's a telecommunication company. So it's more like an M&A boutique accelerator, venture builder. So and I like this because it's, it's it fits more to my character to be opportunistic. And the other part is the regulated part, what I think we can do much better as many other ones. So what are the projects that you like the most now? Where is your focus? Yeah, actually, focus has been a bit uh, changed. Um, we, we are very much focused now on AI technology. That's the reason why mm -hmm. we just announced uh, getting a new uh, board member. 
He's specialized in quantum and AI technologies. Uh, we are also having invested in his company. It's Archeron Group. They're doing a lot also in healthcare and space technologies, um, uh, partly also cybersecurity. And yeah, and that's one of the companies which we bring to IPO. So we invested in a company and the valuation was by around 7 million, like two years ago. Already the company today is by most likely 100 million. And we're planning going to the IPO then in end of the year of around company valuation of 180 to 200 million. So that's nice projects. Uh, it's really hands-on, a lot of things uh, to manage and operatively also to, to bring forward. Yeah, And this is what I like. And uh, so I said, okay, I want to do something what I really like because if you wake up in the morning and you think, ah, I have to go to the office, then I think something is wrong. Yeah, you should be happy if you go to the office and if you are involved with people and with the projects. Absolutely. Yeah, and, Indeed, and, and this is yeah. the feeling what I just got back with here. Yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. So yeah. and that's the reason why I'm very happy. And I think uh, also our employees, they're really enjoying it because it's every day is a new challenge. Every day is a new task. And every day is something different. And, and I think that's a good spot. What I'm getting for you right now is like you literally going to uh, be part of uh, massive industries. Because when we talk about AI, health, uh, this is totally uh, different than gaming and metaverse, right? Like, I mean, here the technology is uh, at a totally different level and I'm sure the investments uh, are accordingly. Yeah, it's an interesting topic what you just uh, catch here. I mean, um, AI has been produced much more innovations as blockchain or crypto, in my opinion. Of course, it's existing longer maybe uh, in the classical industries. That's the reason why the adoption was faster and the innovation went faster, yeah. But principally, this is what I'm missing in blockchain and crypto. And it's a very, in my opinion, simple example. But today, if you set up your wallet, you still need the 10 words the 10 phrases. Mm -hmm. yeah. So why this has been not developed in crypto? So the next part is blockchain. Do you care today if you buy Etisalat or do for your Wi-Fi? No, you don't care. And it's the same with blockchain. For the end user or for the people who are using it, uh, there should be no different. He just should say, I'm using blockchain. So whatever, uh, let's say, blockchain or layer he's using should be not any more, let's say, in the focus. It's a decision yeah. factor yeah. of using yeah, exactly. that app or not. Yeah, yeah. It's just a back end. Uh, yeah, process. exactly. So and um, this is uh, where I think that I technology actually were much faster in adopting to the traditional industry and bringing more innovation technology yeah, on the ground as this uh, was the case by blockchain and crypto. And of course, we all understand crypto is most likely not wanted from the central governments. Uh, I understand. We all understand this. Yeah. And they always have this uh, part of the regulation or missing regulation. Yeah. Uh, but principally, uh, what I'm missing really in crypto and blockchain is the innovating or the innovative part. Yeah. And that's the reason why, in my opinion, they are a bit behind now at the moment. But still, I believe in it. Um, I, I still believe uh, Bitcoin will be once by one million. At least that's my target. Yeah. But uh, principally, we see here just the, dif uh, the differences in the adoption of the technology from traditional industries. For the moment, it looks like uh, the most wanted Bitcoin ETF uh, doesn't uh, look so good for the market. I mean, everyone expected high rocketing uh, pricings, right? And then we're just facing uh, a boring uh, 40000 ish uh, range well how, how um, do you see that what what's really happening behind the doors right now it's the few from people which are outside of the industry in my opinion yeah so um we have been issued um i was used to be invested in a company in germany yeah where i was also like cfo and uh, we were number three in europe issuing a full regulated bitcoin e10 to the german stock market to get etc and we had the same topics as the etf has today so uh, what is missing is, first of all, uh, a proper sales is missing at the moment. It's not so that you just put it on the market and, and, and people are jumping on it. Yeah, so uh, there's need still a lot. It's a long way to go still for marketing, branding, uh, sales, uh, putting it in portfolio theories to, to get accepted and all this kind of thing that really the classical financial institutions they're adopting this kind of products yeah mm, and see. yeah and that's and that's for me the bottleneck and that's the reason why i would like to develop products which are kind of hybrid products which bridging exactly this gap so institutional investors they want to invest in the classical schemas what they're already investing in it 
they're not so much into, let's say, new things. Of course, they want to try it. And we have also like a switch in the generation uh, in, in, in the industry at one point. Yeah, but still, they want to invest in classical products. So you have to deliver something uh, with what they feel similar, uh, uh, familiar yeah, and what they can easily adapt. Yeah. So and that's the reason I think it's it's a great product. I think it's also the right time because the adoption of the fun, of the classical institutional financial will come in the next year years. Yeah, but we don't know if this will be two years or if, or it will be ten years. And this was the same issue which we had also with our uh, Bitcoin ETN on the German stock market. I don't know ex exactly where the price is at the moment, but it was a similar topic. So I'm not wondering that it's not just a high jump, yeah, uh, as everyone was expecting in it, but. I also was not invested in Luna or other things which which crashed. It's just maybe a um, professional point of view and how much you have been experienced gathered during your uh, business life. Even though we've been bombarded with uh, this Bitcoin ETF, uh, like uh, literally super mega oversold uh, news, right? Like every single uh, broadcaster is there at like... Uh, 10 or 15 articles every single day about Bitcoin ETF and uh, all these things. And still not enough. Still uh, the the market is not penetrated in a, in a very vertical way, right? Still people, I think there are some funds, traditional ones, banks still, I think mm -hmm. they haven't heard that uh, has been approved or something. Well, I think um, we have to separate a bit. First of all, I think everyone has heard about it. Yeah, and when I talk with banks here in the UIE, they said, oh, we would we would love to do something, but just the regulation doesn't give it. And mm. I think that's in many other countries, it is the same, especially, let's say, in Western Europe countries. Yeah, Everyone is waiting for the adoption from the uh, in, in, institutional finance uh, in investors. I think this has been already happened. Uh, in my opinion, what are really missing on the market are the, um, let's say, the retail customers, because they're making the differences at, at the end of the day, in my opinion. Of course, the big volumes may be coming from institutional investors. We saw already BlackRock and all of them have been invested a portion in, in, in different cryptocurrencies. But principally, I think uh, the retail investors, they have to come back. And this is what I said. I'm just missing the innovation part in blockchain and in uh, crypto. And that's the reason why it's difficult for new customers, for new retail yes. investors to enter the market. And this innovation part ha must be delivered yeah, otherwise this market will never be as we all would like to see it. But do you think retail will enter in the market when they will see more volatility, when they will feel like, uh, okay, now the, the market is safer and, okay, regulations are in point and I can just put, uh, you know, my $1,000 savings in a <coughs> centralized exchange account and I can just play there around with the money. Hopefully I will double or something. Or they just literally look for this jungle over and over again to uh, shoot for 100x meme coin and stuff like that. What do you see the the perfect entry for retail? Because we, we know that retail in general, we need to say it frankly, it is not an educated market. Like Not because they can't, it's just a matter of not having time enough or whatever, but it's not uh, proper educated. They just play with their wallets over the internet, they lose a lot of money being scam or something like that. Mm -hmm. right? So it's not uh, the education in terms of blockchain is not really on point there. What do you think is in their mind when they will feel like, okay, now I'm confident to put thousand dollars? Because this is actually, you are right. Like mm -hmm. when at the individual level, at the society level, every single one will have like not thousand, but two hundred dollars in Ethereum or whatever to play around in their wallet with NFTs or whatever transactions they do in the ecosystem, that's going to be huge. That's trillions of dollars will enter in the market. Uh, the question is again, why they are not entering the market? Yes, and they do not entering yeah. the uh, market because of the user case. It's too complicated. For the most people, it is too complicated. So a lot of people, they lost money yeah, uh, during the last bear market. A bit burned, let's say, they don't want to jump in again. Yeah, But again, it's about experience. Yeah, and that's the reason why many people using today iPhone and not the Microsoft. Yeah, because it's just not because it had more apps or functions. It's just because it was more user friendly. Yeah, mm -hmm. so blockchain and crypto must get more user friendly. And this is something what I also, at, let's say by here on Ventures, we had still we have every month like 150 to 200 companies applying for uh, funding 
uh, by Helion Capital. We had the same, a, a, a bit higher, uh, like companies for Helion Ventures. But if if I look to the innovation part, a lot of these things were copy paste. Yeah, so there was not really much innovation in it. You really have to uh, look in in details in projects uh, to see, okay, uh, is it just copy paste or is it really something uh, different and something unique? So, but we did investments. One of the investments was Acro Capital. Yeah. Uh, we just uh, closed the fundraising round. Uh, maybe I've read it in the news. Yeah. And uh, this is really something unique. It's like uh, it was originally a DeFi platform. We made out a SaaS product for institutional investors to, uh, to adopt this technology uh, to the classical financial markets. Yeah. And on the other side, still we're creating also own products. And this is really like you can go to your bank, you have an ISIN number, you say, I want to invest. Yeah, the bank uh, is, uh, is is then deploying your money directly to a full regulated products. So you don't have to be afraid that your money gets lost or something is unregulated. Yeah, but behind this, it's still a DeFi platform. It's still a DeFi product with different strategies, but also with principal protection. So and these are the products I think what the market really needs uh, to grow yeah, and to get more adoption, especially from the retail customers. So we're working on this, and I think that's the really innovative part. Yeah, innovation not always happen in, in a wide scale. You know? Innovation most likely happens in little rooms with only a few people who just have uh, George's idea and say, okay, uh, let's, let's go for it. And then the adoption comes very much later. So in this kind of product, of course, here on Capital is working together with his partners, DHF Capital and Acro Capital. Yeah, and it's very nice to see if you have really a good team, a good people, yeah, and how much innovation and also drive you have inside. Yeah, and this is what I really like. But still, do you think the conditions in order to have a successful project, right, on blockchain, on crypto, either is a gaming because you are experienced enough. Last time you mentioned that you put more than $20 million behind gaming, right? With mm-hmm. the Helion Venture. So you know the industry in gaming is uh, is complex and difficult because it takes at least two, three years to to uh, build only the game itself. Like it and has to be fun and stuff like that. So it's a lot of time when you think in a, in, in a monetization mm-hmm. time frame, right? Just to wait three years just for the product. And then the execution and the hype and so on. So when <clears> we talk about gaming, which is an industry that you know has this potential for mass adoption, because the audience is huge behind gaming, you know, three billion gamers mm. worldwide. And then we have this uh, big, big one, metaverse, with uh, all actually all the companies, the big ones, big ten tech companies, they they build uh, towards metaverse, yeah. but still not enough. Still not in in terms of uh, to have that massive success, even though right now I'm a huge fan of gaming, but it's not really one game out there to to destroy the market, you know, like to see it, okay, it's worth it. Um, It's, uh, you know, it can be done in gaming, right? Mm. It's still at the promise level. Uh, Okay, some games are unbelievable, awesome. So I think they are in good position. But what's your sentiment about the market right now? Because you are talking about the regulated product and DeFi and, and stuff like, but those are attached uh, still to the same market, right? And the market can uh, can be sold in uh, in this area with, okay, tell me what exchanges you have, tell me what, uh, uh, you know, launch pads you have, and I will tell you your success in a very short version. This is how it works right now. Well, um, first of all, what you just mentioned, I think that's uh, something where the bear market uh, is kind of, how to say, fixed it, yeah? Because uh, we see the people who are still on the market, uh, they all have survived and they have to survive because they did something different to the other ones. Yeah, uh, so and I think that's a very important thing because in the next the bullish market, which hopefully comes soon, yeah, uh, you will see these people, they will over-accelerate compared to others. Yeah, so I think that's that's a very good thing. So about, uh, I know, gaming, esports, um, yes, it's, it's a huge market, but uh, you see still that this market got not professional entered. Of course, you have already esports funds, you have gaming funds and all those kind of things, but I haven't seen anything really uh, investing into it. And 
I mean, we're also investing in, let's say, in gaming, but we're not going to the pre-seed rounds anymore. Yeah, because just uh, it's... Uh, you learned the lesson. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, we learned the lesson. So also, we, I'm I'm, saying, I mean, yeah. We, yeah, of course, we made money, we lost money. But uh, um, at the end of the day, it's like, as you said, so Metaverse is just like... In, in, in some countries, even if you say metaverse, they say immediately, oh no, uh, yeah. please don't touch it. Yeah. So, and also the, the, the metaverse and NFTs, they have a bit failed their goals, in my opinion. A, a couple of people, uh, we know them all in Dubai, they have made a huge amount of money. Yes. Yeah. And of course, they are good for the ecosystem because they're reinvesting most likely in, in the ecosystem. But this mass adoption just it didn't came. Yeah. So, and in my opinion, I personally uh, believe in esports. Yeah. So, uh, and I think esports is still a good market also to invest. Yeah. But you have to change the investment thesis. Mm. Yeah. So, so that's uh, why this is what you did, right? You, you actually change from those markets that, okay, they've been building for a while, but still yeah. need more time. Right. And then you switch to markets, way bigger markets. I mean, as the potential uh, on the paper is uh, AI and health on the blockchain yeah. together with, uh, uh, you know, blockchain technology uh, incorporated, involved, is going to be something else. Yeah, there are two things. First of all, we like to invest more, let's say, in educated and developed com uh, com companies. Yeah, because we can eliminate the factor of the management. Yeah, but each, each startup, you have a vision and you have a management and most likely you give money in. And what we have seen in our analysis, the most of the projects has been failed because of the management. That's how reality. So the Execution, that's, actually. Yeah, education, you know. Uh, I mean, I saw it in my own company by Hey Ventures. We've been only like two shareholders, but at the end of the day, our interest, it just went in different directions. Yeah. So, and uh, if you have now, I don't know, five or six founders, yeah, and they're all sitting in different places and they all have their own exit strategy in mind, yeah. yeah. So, of course, at the beginning, it looks fine on a paper, but you see already like in a year, two years, how does it goes? And, you know, we got approached by many good projects, good looking projects, and where these projects are today, yeah, they're not existing anymore. Mm. So I'm, we are happy not not to be invested in it. Yeah, and we got I got a lot of bad feedback from from people texting me in WhatsApp. Oh, we were so long friends, and it's such a great product. Why you don't invest? Yeah, I didn't invest because now your product is not existing anymore. So I did everything correct. I sometimes, of course, you have just a feeling in your stomach why you don't do some things, and sometimes it's just um, uh, during the the analyze of the projects you see already. Okay, which one is more? reliable and which projects is not so much reliable because most of the projects are not even able in a half a year to bring the documents. Simple documents like a commercial license or like uh, like a bio from 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 the founder or something like this. And yes. then you always think, okay, uh, thanks God I didn't invest. Yeah. And I think this would be very good for the market in general. But I think this has been already like a bit equalized. So people understand not just to invest in something, to take a bit more care because it has all this thousand percentage what is theoretically possible to make on the market as also like an upside down. Yeah, mm. and I think especially for retail investors is very important that they uh, have the opportunity to invest in the right products to have good experience. What do you think about uh, a founder who, who is already financially independent? Mm. It will be, for that project, will position the project in a, in a better Odds for success. Yeah, With this the is what founder I said. Being yeah. already, you know, I'm I'm okay. I'm perfectly fine. I'm not doing this for money. Let's say we're all working for money. Yeah, people are saying I don't work for money. Um, um, I don't know. I don't believe it's maybe a nice proverb to say it. Yeah, but principally we all work for money. And we want to be successful. Yeah. So and companies. This is what I said. If uh, companies are more <clears throat> educated or more sophisticated or more serious already in a later stage. It's easier for us to handle with with uh, with this company, yeah, because we have a serious contract partner, and uh, that's that's something what we appreciate, and that's the reason why we have been started to investing in more developed companies, because for us it's much easier to bring our value to the company. Yeah, we also have like a companies, you know, uh, which we think it's a good idea. We like the management, we like the company, we like the founders, we like the idea, we like the technology. 
But still, after mm. half a year, we still don't know mm. how this company is structured. So yeah, so uh, and this we don't have, let's say, by already uh, more developed companies. And then it's much easier for us as a like contract partner to accelerate this company and to help to be successful. And we're doing debt financing, we're doing fundraising, we're doing restructuring, doing turnarounds. Yeah, so we are most likely a kind of M&A boutique, yeah, like a turnaround boutique. Yeah, and this is, I think, where, uh, where really the, uh, the nice things are. And everyone, it doesn't matter how successful he is, everyone has a limit in his capacity. Yeah, and we're trying to help companies uh, to overbridge this limit in their capacity. It doesn't matter if mm. it's financially, management, yeah, uh, technology, innovation-wise, branding, marketing, whatever. So we're trying to leverage these companies. And as I said at the beginning, this is what I really like because you are really deep in the projects. You work together with the management. Yeah, you're really sitting on a table with them and helping them to making the right decisions. And this is the success. I want to mention one thing uh, here and for people uh, out there who is watching the episode. The easiest way to lose money in a, in a very uh, paradoxically uh, fact, right? The easiest way to lose money is to have a lot of money. When the fund is, is sitting on a lot of money, you, it's, it's very easy to put money behind projects like, oh, okay, yeah, what's half million? We have a lot, right? So you put half million, half million or whatever without going um, in a very proper manner to analyze all the uh, facts inside of that uh, investment. Because what you are mentioning right now is, you see, now you already cut off this part with, okay, we don't do very early stages anymore. Oh, we're doing we, still very early ages. I mean, like, uh, <laughs> but in, in, some in a markets, different way. Right? In, in a different way. In yeah. Some markets, and then uh, we don't do this anymore. We don't do this anymore because you have your own reasons. Very solid, right? <clears throat> and when you look at the market, actually, you have very few spots when you can actually place your money. Even if you have, you are very well founded. Yeah. But when you actively looking to to invest, then you'll see, okay, this is not a good team. This is not. A, So you find all those marks and then you see, okay, but I want to invest. Yeah. So how is this challenge for you? And like literally, what, what's your last investment, for example, in which, uh, which market do you literally send the green line to, to deploy the money? Actually, you know, it's, uh, I, I would see it from a different side. Yeah, so uh, our esports and, and, and gaming investments, uh, we make uh, per year 100 plus. Otherwise, we wouldn't invest. Yeah, so we have also more conservative products in which we have. Yeah, for example, the let's say uh, the saving book uh, for DeFi. Yeah, where you have principal protection. You just connect your wallet with the vault, and you make 15 to 17 percent without risk, and you can leverage your wallets, for example. So it's really very much uh, driven by the opportunities what you have, and this also I found out. You know, it's not about how much AUM you have. Uh, that's a funny thing. Everyone asking, oh, how mm -hmm. much AUM you have? This says nothing about... Assets under management. Yeah, yeah. 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 It, it says nothing about how how successful you are with managing your money. It just say maybe how much you possibly have. Yeah, uh, but we are not interested in this. Yeah, We are really very much interested in in generating profitable investments for our investors and LPs. Yeah, and this is for what we're looking for. So if someone comes and say, uh, I don't know, Oliver, here you have 500 million. Yeah, let's just take a number. No one came and said this to me. Yeah, I would say no, because I wouldn't know how really to deploy the money. Yes. And that's exactly what you're saying. You know, it's like, and, you know, and this is, this is the chaotic thing in which time we live. You know, uh, the governments, they print money. The governments give the money to the institutional investors. They're sitting off the money and they have no idea how to deploy it because They are not allowed to go in risk because, for, I don't know, for Basel. Because in, it's in, not in, about in, money. Yeah. This, this it's, it's, it's about not Basel about five equity, what you need. So they give it then to BlackRock or to whoever who are like a hedge fund because they don't have these regulations. So, and they also have the issue. I mean, how, how do I make this profit? Yeah. I mean, I have to show something. I have to pay salaries. Yeah. Of course, I want also like a profit sharing, performance sharing. So, so, um, And here, here in Capital, we are just very tight on it. Yeah, we say we're just raising what we really need for the projects. Yeah, and then we're investing the money uh, according to, 
to the ideas what we have yeah to make this company successful yeah and that's just the difference uh so uh, when we go to our investors and and uh, a lot of them said we love we love the idea we love the project but can we not deploy instead of 10 million maybe 100 million or that's 1 million 10 <laughs> million no it's not needed we don't want this yeah because each project also has his size of investors and it's very important at least in, in my opinion it's very important that also you have to give companies and management you have to give them the time to grow yeah and people should understand that it's a matter of liquidity as well behind the project because you can put money okay very early stage you you caught something you know been in touch with the founders you had the info you have the opportunity to put let's say 1 million dollar right behind that project the project does incredibly good job and they are 200 tax, whatever. You cannot withdraw 100 million from that project. It's impossible. No, but I said there, it's already There is no with, such yeah. a liquidity out there. Yeah, so I, I always have to laugh when all these professionals sitting there on this uh, different... You have 100 millions on paper, but that's pretty yeah, much yeah. everything what on you have. On these events, yeah, and as great speakers, and then they talk about, yeah, I make 1,000%, 500%, on what? This is not yeah. scalable for an institutional investor. This is not scalable for a fund. Yes. You know, and every fund who started with this, I only invest in tokens. Yeah. In a bullish market, it's easy. But to maintain this token in a bear market or even to make profit out of this is impossible. And you cannot invest in a startup in a token 500 or 1, 1 million. Yeah. So me as a, let's say, startup, as a founder, I would never give it because you control then the token price. Yeah, on the one side. And on the other side, you don't want to control it as an investor because you take all this, let's say, the funny part out. <laughs> yeah, so, and, uh, but th it, this is also, it shows that this ecosystem, uh, at least for the, uh, uh, in the last bullish market, you had, uh, unfortunately, maybe not uh, very much educated people in the market. Yeah, so, and, and now the, during the bear market, we got a bit like a, a kind of sorted, yeah, so of the players. And, and you see a lot of, People and funds who have been said, oh, we're investing only in token, they changed the strategy. They said, okay, token, yes, but I want to have equity. Yeah, so they come mm -hmm. back to tra tra traditional models because they find out, ah, damn, I cannot, I cannot invest so much in tokens. Yeah. It's just not working like this. It's not scalable. So, and that's a funny thing. So when I see all these people, all these professionals sitting there together with me on this on the summits as speakers and yeah. and, and I hear them, so sometimes in in inside of myself, I don't want to be this teacher, yeah, but they have no clue about what they're talking about. Yeah, so, and that's actually, unfortunately, it was also a problem in my opinion. This is what you see now uh, by many of these events. Used to be people were inside in you know, when there were speakers or moderators, they were inside and they were listening to it. Nowadays, they're all outside. Why? Because outside is networking and inside you have people who's most likely trying to sell a product. Of course, I understand all these uh, summits, they have to refinance them somehow. But that's the reason why they get boring speakers. Yeah, and we saw this so many times now by the events uh, where you go, and I always try to be a bit like uh, Coin Republic. Different yeah, Coin, Coin Republic. Mm -hmm. They just uh, said to me, now comes Mr. Unique Oliver, yeah, or Special <laughs> Oliver. Yeah, because they now, um, because I try to make it a bit more interesting. Yeah, and yeah. this is what I'm missing, you know, this controversy, discussions, what we had like 2019, 2020. We had this, and this got lost. And that's a bit a pity, yeah. And yeah. Uh, I would be very happy if we get a bit more of this uh, uh, culture back of, uh, let, let's say, the early uh, crypto and blockchain people who were all on their side a kind of against the traditional system. Die-hard fans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But uh, these people, they made it interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah? and now what we have is uh, people selling their products or they don't have really to contribute something, yeah, and they're just boring to hear. So, um, and I really hope that this is changing again a bit because I think people that have a right if they're going to one of these events to, the to really time, contribute on the knowledge. In the same time, stuff that w we can't control. It's a matter of, uh, you know, just play the game as it is. Some people will, they're here in the industry to do certain things. Others to do different, right? Uh, real builders, as I mention all the time here at the podcast. Mm -hmm. But uh, I want to touch now a part which is uh, quite important at the macroeconomic level. Um, you being a very uh, experienced investor coming from traditional banking, right? 
In this year, 2024, we are going to have at the global level more than 50 countries with elections. So those, as we have this wave now of uh, new presidents are suddenly uh, Bitcoin friendly, crypto friendly. You know, we see that Argentina guy, he won just, uh, you know, in a blink of an eye with the Bitcoin uh, narrative behind and many examples, right? And of course, the most important one, the US, uh, the elections in mm. the US. How do you see the landscape? Uh, and the impact will have in the industry. Like you see the moves at the global level. Some people are, are more friendly or not. And you want to touch this part a little bit? Yeah, I can touch it. So, yeah, look, um, in my opinion, um, do we would be all happy with a weather would be the same all over the world? No, we wouldn't be happy. And I think also that's the same about governments. You need changes. Yeah, uh, Otherwise, you don't get like changes in, in technology or changes in, in focusing in. So, and of course, maybe there are many elections uh, on in, in, in the world, but uh, principally, I think uh, the main focus is in the future on, on, let's say, GCC in Southeast Asia. That's also where we, where we are focused in, yeah, because we believe that's one of the safest and biggest uh, ecosystems in the world. Because unstable factors is today Europe, is the US, yeah. Uh, th these are unstable factors in, 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 in the world compared to GCC or compared to, uh, for example, Southeast Asia. So that's the reason why we are very much focused on a global level on these countries, yeah. So not so much on, on the US market or on the European market. How likely do you see the scenario where the US actually they lose the position of of being a world leader in terms of politics and financial Well, that's a very political question. Yeah, I know, <laughs> but it's very well uh, connected, right? Because obviously the game at the, the highest level, at the country levels, uh, we had here uh, our friend uh, Gordon Einstein, right? yeah. the crypto lawyer uh, attorney guy. And uh, shout out to Gordon for his events. Yeah. Um, He said this is a very difficult uh, and it's very challenging to have this global consensus in terms of crypto regulations because one country wants something, other one wants something else, different strategies, different end results, uh, achievements, right? So obviously the, the global politics will have a big impact in our industry. This is the, my question around his... Uh, This part. Yeah, well, I mean, um, I have no glass ball to look forward to who will make what kind of regulation, but principally, I think, and that's really something what, uh, let's say, the ecosystem have to keep. It's the decentralized part. Yeah, it doesn't matter if it's in the future CBDCs or uh, other innovations or other solutions, yeah. Uh, for me, the main key is the decentralization part. So, and this is something really what we should keep in, in, in the ecosystem. Because, uh, of course, uh, a blockchain gives governments control about us. Yeah, and this is something that no one would like to have. Yeah, so, uh, but that's an essential part for me. Let's say if there's a kind of blockchain crypto philosophy, then, this is, uh, then it is for me the decentralized part. And that's something where we really have to look for. But this is something what everyone has to look for. Yeah, it's uh, how much data you want to give away from you, how much information you want to give away. You know, and, and that's, a, for example, a funny thing, uh, in my opinion, you know, Here in Dubai, I have no problems giving my data away mm -hmm. because I now I, I don't pay taxes here. No one is behind me. No one, no one is threatening me. Yeah, no one is blackmailing me or something like this. You know, in Dubai, you are free. You're independent. Yeah, you can say your opinion. You have a good life here if you're following uh, the rules and the regulations. In Europe. I would be afraid giving all my data to the government because they're using it for their own purpose. Yeah. So, and I think that's a different. I think uh, the, the main that's a key. That's huge difference. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but you can ask everyone. Yeah. Yeah. So here, I don't care if I have the security cameras, have this face scanning, exactly, and, and yeah. they know what I'm doing because yeah. I do everything uh, by law because the state do not force me to do something illegal. Yeah. So the state says, okay, you are free men, you are here, you're following the rules and you, you, you can do what you want. Yeah. So there is this feeling behind <clears throat> that um, you are on the right hands. Yes, exactly. Like, no matter what, you are on the right hands. And this yeah. one is super, I mean, this is the biggest win they, they have achieved so far, in yes. my opinion. Like, is this trust? Like, I've been living here for a decade. 
Yeah, and I this is the, exactly, on the same yeah. page. I have yeah. the same feeling. Yeah, this is what I want to say. Coming back to this, let's say, political topic. For me, the main part is which government can convince their population to trust them. Yeah, and uh, we talk about governments, but uh, principally, every like in every democracy, the people make the democracy, and not the governments. And governments never brought wealth or money to the people; they take it from them for the taxes. So, and this is what people have to understand, and this is what I appreciate in Dubai. They created here really like a surrounding and an environment where uh, where unique people coming here, entrepreneurs coming here, yeah, uh, people with ideas and visions, yeah, or just people who want to have a good and secure life. And this is the environment yes. of Dubai. I know you are very well connected, uh, let's say, at the top management at the country level. I'm not afraid to say mm. it because everyone knows that uh, your connections here in the region. So, um, I mean, not afraid. It's just a matter of uh, yeah. uh, revealing those aspects. Uh, it's um, uh, What is the approach at, at that level when it comes to um, innovators like you, when they say, okay, we want to build products like this, we want to become, because all your products are regulated, right, in uh, mm. uh, KFC and stuff. So uh, how did you find their approach when you go there and say, I want to build these things here? I have to say, since I'm in Dubai on in GCC in general, I never had like uh, a situation where someone was not interested of finding a solution. <laughs> yeah, and this, and, and no one, maybe they say no, but there's always let's sit and talk. Yeah, maybe there is something what we can do or we can make an exception for something unique. And this is what I like to hear. You know, they are, they are really focused on the leaders and the elite and they are not focused on making every, everyone the same. And this is a different. So and that's the reason why uh, Dubai has been adopted all these entrepreneurs and, vis and visionaries. And I remember, you know, like 10, 15 years ago, uh, a lot of people from Europe, they came to Dubai and they just opened their company and they still lived in, in Europe. Now they're all moving here with their families. The ecosystem has been changed completely. Because they yes. say, look, what the U.S. been maybe in the 80s is now Dubai. Yeah, I can come. I'm free in my decisions. I can show. I mean, how many people we know from San Francisco, from London, from Frankfurt, from Paris who say, look, I cannot go on, on the street anymore with my Rolex. I cannot send my kids there to school anymore. Yeah, so in Dubai have been created a safe environment. Yeah, and I think this is, uh, thank you very much to the government in the UAE and, and, and the leaders. They did the right thing. The safety <clears throat> part is one point, but... Why on earth everyone will choose to pay 45% taxes in uh, UK yeah. or Austria uh, or uh, and, whatever? And they not even use it for their own population. Yeah, They send it around and the world. Yeah. Uh, so you have here uh, a totally different story. No, I really like Way the approach here. Uh, uh, um, I mean, we are all guests in Dubai. Yeah, uh, It's their country still. And I really appreciate it that they Always keep it like be. this. Yeah, And uh, this is maybe what uh, other governments also should think about it. Um, the vibe is different here, and uh, only who who is not here, uh, yeah, <laughs> I cannot uh, understand. But otherwise, uh, um, everybody is happy. Yeah. No, I really like world. this, and this is what I said. You know, I never had here a situation where uh, even you go to the immigration office, you go to the health authorities, wherever you go, you never find a situation where they're not trying to support you. I this never made this massive. experience. This yeah, that's massive. massive. Yeah, you know. Of course, it's still a bit sometimes it's going up and down in the decisions. <laughs> yeah. So we all have this experience when we're looking for visas or whatever. Yeah. yeah. But principle, if you go somewhere, everyone tries to support and to help you. Yeah. And the service in Dubai is great. So, and that's the reason why I think a lot of people are also coming here because here you can afford service. Yeah. And not people looking to you and say like jealous and say, oh, look, uh, he has this car and he has this people and that and like this. So no, it's still, and, uh, so the core people in Dubai, uh, if you go somewhere yeah, to a meeting, everyone tries to help you. No one is hiding his network or his relationships. Everyone says, oh, I know this guy. Oh, I know this guy. Let's meet him. Wait, I make a call. I make a WhatsApp group or whatever. It's a positive environment. Yeah, and this is what we all love in Dubai. Yeah, it's this openness to, <clears throat> to connect and to network and to put, you know, um, connecting the dots yeah. uh, from each one's ecosystem and make it happen, you know. I think yeah. this is the the mentality here. Let's make it happen, right? Like you are who you are, your skills, your ecosystem, 
Let's make it happen. Yeah, um, we all came here and uh, we're accepting this. And, yes, of uh, So uh, people who come here and they want to have something else, they should not come. They should stay where they are. And we are doing this at 30 degrees all the time, which is... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's worth to be mentioned. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, we covered a lot of aspects. Um, you told me that uh, now you are going to have a lot of focus around AI in health, right? But AI is huge, Oliver, right? We know that AI has multiple implications. It yeah. also takes a lot of time to, to develop uh, nice models. Yeah, but uh, for example, Ashan Group, we developed 2019 uh, with Sheikh Mohammed's office, uh, when mm. I remember correctly. Uh, when you go to there for your x ray, uh, for uh, for your visa, yeah, uh, they're using already our A AI technology for um, uh, uh, for the X-rays for your uh, lung, yeah. So, and this is in my opinion the future. This is how you com can combine AI and innovation technologies, yeah, with in with classical like uh, traditional industries. And this is all about it's about adoption, yeah, and customer friendliness. I don't know if this is the right word, but yeah, customer adoption, yeah. So and yeah, and and this is about it so would you would you be interested to build your own like your own personal assistant like uh, someone is in there uh, on your phone or somewhere in the house just ask a question knows everything about you uh, you know are you going to use the eye in this direction no or i don't is, like this <laughs> way too private uh, um, or you just you keep it for the business purposes because we know that yeah, I can be used in so many things. <laughs> yes, uh, I know AI can be used for many things, and uh, AI got already used for many things. And but uh, do I want to have my own avatar sitting at home and yeah. making my decisions? No, I don't. Like want. your digital twin that knows like one on one replica is yeah. Oliver in the. Digital but I think, version. for example, what this makes sense if you have like for financial decisions and AI. You know, the banking sector. I still believe we will have banks in the future, but. Uh, the kind or the uh, the kind of banks will change. Yeah, the service will change, and I'm sure maybe at one point you have even like an avatar AI technology, whatever, who knows exactly how you want to invest and they and they will invest your money. Yeah, yeah? this so is exactly what I'm talking. I'm talking for um, let's say mm. you have a meeting, right? Have a meeting with some investors, some founders from uh, Singapore. One is in Taiwan. <clears throat> One is in uh, yes, right? You jump on a call, you jump on a meeting, everything digital, right? And then you just uh, activate your uh, digital twin. Digital Oliver speaks 190 languages instantly, no problem. I don't know. Look, uh, um, this is the is same. Um, I think a lot of things should be s still personal. And I don't want to give... Life is about experience. Yeah, so, and if the journey is about experience and someone is overtaking this experience from you, so what is your life? What is the value at the end of your life? I'm I'm with you here and I like your direction, but I want to stay in, in this uh, mm -hmm. scenario, right? Where you can just set up your digital twin and say, listen, from this meeting, we need to close the deal. So this guy, here is the file, here is the personality, here is what he has done before and uh, up to now everything. Uh, or you can choose the style of the talk, like be friendly. Be arrogant, be uh, corporate, be your digital twin, right? Oliver will speak exactly like that. I mean, it's very easy to to uh, to get comfortable with this kind of things because the impact and the efficiency is is unbelievable. Like imagine you suddenly you are able to 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 be part of uh, meetings with people. It doesn't matter the country. You are there speaking like native. Uh, speaker right yeah and uh, close the deals the communication is way faster you can close the deal accordingly so why don't you start using it like crazy as i said uh, i have my opinion about this and i wouldn't like to use ai to uh, compensate me because at the end of the day then why it's needed that you are alive yeah so, what is uh, the creation right yeah i mean yeah you i think there are many useful things to use new technologies matter if it's nfts metaverse but in the same way like also ai technologies 
but I wouldn't like uh, to. No, I love my life and I like to live my life as it is. So I'm happy with everything. I'm laughing so because why should I give this pleasure to someone else? Is literally who not even you give your life to yeah. So your I, I don't want twin. Yeah, I also don't want to live forever. You, I don't want to. I don't want to be uploaded in a metaverse and living forever. No, actually, I don't have this. I'm very happy with my life, and I think it's more about how I use my time. Yeah, and as I said, you know, when you wake up in the morning and you like what you're doing and you go happy to bed. So, I mean, what else do you want from this life? Well, Oliver, I have bad news for you. Those oh my things God. will happen for sure. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, I mean, it's not up to us if you're coming or not, but it's up to us if you are using it or not, in, in which way you are using it. Yeah, I agree with you. Of, of course, everything what one human has been thought in his life once, someone else will reach for him. Yeah, so, but just you ask me personally, and that's my yeah, opinion. Yeah, of course, opinion absolutely. It. But the thing is, um, the people should understand this because um, at the very beginning, it's a matter of uh, exactly this kind of reactions, right? You start laughing, you, you can even imagine something like that is super fun. But at one point, it will become just a natural reality. You just press a button, connect the, uh, you know, connection is mm. done. You are in the meeting, you close the meeting, but you are on the beach on Bali and you've been in a meeting, uh, I don't know where. This okay. is going to be in a daily basis, like a plain, uh, you know, environment, uh, very boring, nothing special in a very, very short period. If you say so, uh, I'm happy to invest in it. Do I want to have this life? No. <laughs> But yeah. we already invested. A friend of mine, he developed his own AI technology for uh, reports. That was very interesting, and uh, so we used uh, we're using this, for example, for our due diligence reports internally. Yeah, and this works yeah. perfectly. So still, but you need someone who's doing the fine tuning, because you see in the words and how it's written, yes. it, it is AI made at least at the moment. Yeah, but it's great. I'm happy. It's a good tool. It's it's supporting us in our daily life, and this is about technology have to support human existence, and not vice versa at one point. Yes. Yeah, otherwise, uh, we have a Terminator century or yeah. or whatever who's controlling us. And um, I mean, we had a similar discussion about metaverse, living forever and all those kind of things. You see, you're still going every day to work. You still go every day to the toilet. Nothing has been changed in this metaverse. But it's nice to think about it from a philosophical point of view. Yes. How much this really will be adapted at the end in in daily life is a completely different So you don't question. want to be immortal. You want to live with that uh, unknown factor, right? You know, the beautiness of life is not the perfection. The beautiness of life is are the little mistakes in the perfection. And this is what I believe. Oliver, we need to wrap it up for today. Another, yeah, it's a pity. Uh, we could talk a bit longer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, um, uh, you know, when the conversation is uh, going in this uh, dynamic uh, vibe, and with you is all the time like this. We have a lot of conversations uh, at the private events when we meet all the time. So thank you very much for coming today. I think people um, will take a lot of insights from the investment perspective and world uh, uh, markets. And uh, again, thank you so much for coming. And uh, I want to see you building great things in the industry. I'm sure you'll do. And uh, we'll be here for uh, another episode for sure and uh, we'll see where this AI is going to bring us. Yeah, Danny, I hope you are not in Bali at the moment and are just <laughs> talking with someone else. <laughs> no. But yeah, thank you very much. For I the can confirm I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for the invitation yes. and uh, it's always a pleasure talking with you. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you consider, if you like uh, the episode, drop me a comment. Uh, and uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channels on social media platform, um, all major platforms, Iron Capital News. ICNnews.xyz is the platform where you stay on the curve with all the news articles in the industry. And uh, thank you so much for watching and see you on the next one. <music>